look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 In hindsight You make mistakes, we're learning from this In hindsight be yours today and your tomorrow In hindsight It's so much clearer now Hey, welcome to Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. Have you ever felt like your mind is constantly buzzing with chaos and is preventing you from truly resting and recovering? Well, today, I'm going to dive into a transformative power of sound healing with our guest, Willow J, a a dedicated sound healing pr- practitioner, travel traveler, okay, I'm doing a lot of traveling, and artist. Willow's journey across the globe, immersed in shamanic uh, practices and wisdom, has led to a profound understanding of the connection between sound, spirituality, and healing. From battling constant fatigue and health issues to unlocking the path of rest and self-discovery, Willow shares insights into her journey and how sound became a gateway to meditation and healing. Welcome, Willow. How are you doing today? So much. I am doing phenomenal. Thank you so much for having me. I am really excited to uh, dive into all these topics. Uh, You know, I'm really excited too, because honestly, the last few days, I've, I've, I've looked at my, my Fitbit, I've looked at the app, and it says that I'm getting a sufficient amount of sleep, right? Just based off of the hours, but I'm feeling very sluggish. So I was really interested and excited to talk to you today and uh, get some insights from you on how I can feel just a little bit better uh, during the day. But anyway, where are you, where are you calling in from today? Today, I'm calling in from Quebec, from Canada. I'm kind of like in the woods. I'm taking a little time for myself, retreats, working on my art, working on my music. So uh, it's been highly transformational to be here. So how is the weather out there in Amazing. Canada? So Amazing. It's, nice... it's really nice. It's definitely this part of Quebec. It's a lot colder than the rest. So we're having maybe like, I don't know, in Fahrenheit. But it's about 17 degrees in Celsius. Well, uh, yeah, I didn't need, really need to have a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not a calendar, but a calculator. You, yeah, calculate, yeah, yeah. So I can so I can make that 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 transition because I hear a lot of Fahrenheit. I talk to um, a lot of people from Canada. Mm-hmm. One of my good friends, he's actually a guy who hired me for a position. He's Canadian, right? And he always gives the the Celsius too. And I'm like, all right, that sounds cold. <laughs> 17, but I don't think yeah. it is. 17 is like, it's nice. You can be in a t-shirt outside, but there's a little breeze. You need to stay in the sun. Gotcha. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm just going to jump right into it. Then we're going to slide back into that. What do we want to call it? That hindsight when we look at, you know, from Little Willow to Willow now, right? And how some of the things that you've experienced kind of shaped who you are today. But can you share a transformative experience where sound played a significant role in healing or self-discovery? And I want you to look at it from a perspective, not from where you are now, but almost like a, a catalyst to where you are now, right? To that, to that journey to where you are now. Totally. So, um, that was about 10 years ago. I mm-hmm. was uh, after having a transformational experience with uh, in with a tribe actually. I've met this guy in the jungle who was walking around with suitcases full of singing bowls. Mm-hmm. And you know, I kind of received that calling that I needed to work with sound, but it wasn't very specific or of what that exactly would entail. So I meet this guy and he says, "Oh, I'm just about to give a training with sound healing." He talks about these singing metal bowls, you know, and I've seen them couple of times before but I wasn't really aware and I decided to jump in and take that training and that absolutely changed my life you know experiencing the vibrations of these bowls on my body for the first mm-hmm. time it was like the first moment that I've ever experienced anything that was close to meditation um I have ADHD I have a very racy mind so you know, this teacher, he puts these bowls on my body and he starts playing. And at some point he stops and he's like, so Willa, what do you think? Like, how long was I playing? And he's I'm like, not 15 minutes. He's like, it's been an hour and a half. Goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of like the moment that really wow. set me on this path of discovering this medicine for myself mm-hmm. and decided to later share it with the world. Wow. All right. What led you to the jungle? 
what led you you said water tribe uh no like a tribe so i spend a really long time traveling around the world and yeah. i was in south that was in panama actually in central america okay where i spent some time there and i spent some uh, amazing moments with um uh, you know the ancestral knowledge and a lot of elders and this is where I discovered this medicine of sound. Mm -hmm. And it did actually completely transform my life. All right. So I'm going to stop there because now we're going to go back and then we're going to catch back up to what led you to start traveling in the first place. <laughs> Let's go back to Little Willow. So tell us, tell us a little bit about just you growing up, your journey, and, and some of the hurdles that you had. And I'll, I'll jump in and ask questions as... You start opening up and I'm going to ask you some questions because I know you're going to just try to roll through it. Like you said, Sounds uh, uh, good. like you said, tribe and jungle and just I, like it's a matter of fact. <laughs> so let's go ahead. Tell us a little yeah. bit about Little Willow. Yeah. So I was born in Poland mm. and uh, when I was 10 years old, I moved to Canada, to Montreal. So that was definitely a very interesting experience of being, you know, unrooted from my own community yeah. and had to try grow new roots as a child in a country that I didn't speak the language, um, that I didn't really have a lot of family there. So that's kind of like my experience. And that definitely created a lot of like mental chatter in my head. I was always a very mentally active child which later led to, you know, anxiety and a little bit of depression and trying to find my place in the world and really understand how I could bring something to this world, how I can live, leave my mark, inspire others and support the community. And I was completely obsessed with this notion of trying to give back to the community. And what was that my special gift? And for years, you know, I spent a really long time traveling trying to you know to find that and there was this one specific moment that happened in my life that really woke me up and that led me on that journey olin was your biggest challenge the language i know part of it is probably mm -hmm. the youth but was the biggest challenge from going from poland to to um canada the language for you the biggest challenge was to leave my grandma behind mm because she was a pillar in my life mm -hmm. she was always there with me um, and then the language was definitely the second challenge yeah so i spoke polish and then i had to learn french so english is actually my third language wow i'm still working i'm still working on english <laughs> i think it's pretty good <laughs> i've tried to learn another language and i have been very unsuccessful i did take german in high mm -hmm. school and i think i passed that with a d so that's an a b c d i don't know what, what it is in poland and canada a b c d d not really good right but i did pass. Yeah. i took latin of all languages in high school Interesting. as well yeah so but Go you ahead. know what it's really difficult to learn languages at school i tried german as well and i got an e f like i failed super good with languages Right. And learning it, you know, what it comes to, it's like you have to be immersed in the community and you have to live for survival. Like I needed to learn mm. because I needed to find the bathroom. I needed to find food. I needed to find friends. So these primal needs really push you to accelerate your learning. Yeah. In California, they have an immersion program for, for kids and it starts off in kindergarten. I was just talking to a, a, f a friend of mine yesterday about it. And he was saying how his daughter was in this immersion program and she hated it at first because like first day it's just all Spanish. They just hit you. Like you got to figure it out. Right. So it's almost that survival thing that you're talking about in a controlled environment, obviously. Right. But you know, for grades. So that that's, you know, I've never been, or I've never actually tried to put myself in that type of situation. So you're reiterating that point that he said, you need to immerse yourself uh, in, in the language. So tell me a little bit about you in not getting enough mental rest or rest, or you, you had similar experiences like I'm having this morning or the last couple of weeks where you're getting the hours that you need for sleep by doctors or recommendations or whatever it is, but you're not feeling rested when you wake up. So tell us about this and what it led to in your life. 
Right. So, you know, when it comes to rest, there is definitely something that is like, you know, you're trying to rest, but you don't know how to get to that recuperative point. Mm -hmm, And I mm -hmm. think this is a very big problem with a lot of people is that they can't fully let go of their body and Mm -hmm. allow themselves to go into that moment of rest. So, you know, in my personal experience, it was definitely trying to calm my mind through different methods. One of them is definitely sound and just immersing yourself in an activity where you're able to access flow. And that access of flow brings you to a point where you're able to really let go. And later in, you know, at night when you feel more fulfilled in that place. So when you're going to sleep at night, your body is able to really relax a little bit more. But there's many different methods, you know, like that you can do for that. But there's something definitely that is being triggered you know in your subconscious that keeps coming back even if you consciously don't feel that that is preventing your body from taking the rest that it needs so how many techniques did you try when you realized you know before you came to sound being the one that really works for you Yeah, I tried a lot of things, you know, as Mm -hmm. a teenager, especially like, um, you know, I even tried like, at some point drinking, you know, doing uh, like, even like vices to try to find something that would almost like take the edge off. Mm. You know, traveling was something as well that was um, a big part of this, because you're keeping your mind very, like, uh, busy okay you have a point you have to get to a certain destination and you don't allow yourself to overthink so that was a big way of how you know i was trying to kind of cope with that in my mind um you know meditations i tried all sorts of supplements all sorts of herbs teas essential oils exercise and it's true that all of these things put together do give an effect But I think the first thing is really important to get radically honest with yourself and really look at where you are at in your life in a specific moment to be able to like frame that, you know? Right. It's funny. All of the, you know, now I'm having a different appreciation for the the different things that I'm seeing now. Just listen to you talk. So I had a friend of mine, um, I won't say his name, but every night he takes a bath and he (laughs) drinks alcohol so they can get a better night's sleep right i won't Mm -hmm. say what he drinks but that's his routine every day right and yesterday i I talked to a a friend of mine and strangely enough we were talking about coffee but then he he showed me his world assortment of different types of tea that he (laughs) that he has and he was kind of sluggish looking at the time right and i'm wondering is this something where he's trying to help with his overall just being alert being awake being present being you know all of these things right is he looking at tea as a solution for that so now i can broaden my conversation with him on why he showed me all these different teas besides the fact they did look good though (laughs) and it definitely really helps you know um having all these little rituals in place yeah to keep yeah, yeah. your body and mind clear. Um, but for me, you know, it was a big battle. And I think what ultimately made it for me, it was to find purpose in mm. life. That's mm. what changed everything. When I discovered what I was here to do, this is when my life changed dramatically. What is your purpose? Wow. Well, you know, my purpose is to bring people into a state of meditation and into a state of being that they can be aware of where they're at. Now, my second purpose um, is to help creatives and help artists to really find, um, you know, allow themselves to flourish, allow themselves to really awake that inner artist in them and remove barriers that are sabotaging them and following their dreams. Okay, good. Good. So you traveled a lot. What's the most extravagant place or the most impactful or the most wild place that you've traveled to? I think it was India. Okay. What made India special? The culture, the colors, the people, you know, how they're all so 
it's so simple and so complicated. You know, the life there, it's so chaotic and so full of life. But at <laughs> yeah. the same time, it's so like relaxed and loving. Like I received so much love there. It was mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. Okay. You do sound therapy. So let's, ex let's talk about that. What is it you, you said? What's, you know, the person put the, the cup or the bowl on your back and on your body, you said, I'm, I'm assuming mm -hmm. back, but on your body. Tell me what sound therapy is. Sounds good. Um, sound therapy is really um, based on trying to control your brain waves or maybe mm -hmm. re-regulate your brain waves with different frequencies mm. um, that are coming from different instruments. It's usually instruments that are more have more of a drone um, effect, which means that their frequencies are stable. It's the same note. We're mm -hmm. not trying to make it too melodic because okay. when we bombard a human brain with a, a lot of different frequencies, the brain stops trying to analyze the chord progressions or the notes. And it says, I can't understand any of this. Mm. So it basically just stops trying to figure it out and it goes into a different brainwave state into a theta brainwave state, which is kind of like the meditative state. We're trying to keep people between the meditative and the sleep. Right. Really try to take them out of this like overthinking state. Okay. And what's the what's the overall goal of a sound therapy session? The goal is to bring people to a level of relaxation mm -hmm. where their body feels um, aligned with trying to recuperate. So when your body feels relaxed and meditative, it has time to try to repair. It has time to try to really uh, like reharmonize itself. But it's the repair aspect that we're looking for. Because okay. when you are in living in your day to day life and you're always in alert, you know, you're always trying to like look at threats, your body doesn't have time to recuperate. It pretty much shuts off all of the vital functions to be able to really focus on all the things that are around you. Mm -hmm. So when you manage to get to this place of relaxation, your body can say, now I have time to repair all of the things that have been going wrong. Tell me the different types of clients that you have, like walks of life, careers, things like that. It just, and some of the reasons, maybe, maybe, maybe one of the more common theme reasons why they come to see you for this sound therapy session. So I have many different people that come from yeah. a bunch of different walks of life. Um, they all have this one thing in common of trying to find a moment of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And people who are trying to find something that is along the lines of a gentle therapy. Mm. Because, you know, I really believe in talk therapy. I really believe in, you know, I studied psychology. I really believe in even like medication sometimes when people really need something. It's it all has its place. But some people really need this moment of gentleness when they can dive into themselves mm -hmm. and really do the healing for themselves in an environment that's controlled, in an environment that's hosted by someone who can hold the space for them. Because in my sessions, I have people, you know, the, the sound can trigger people in really different ways. Yeah. Sometimes chimes can make you cry because it reminds you of the porch of your grandfather. You know, certain sounds, you don't even know why, but they're triggering. You have people that start laughing, people that start crying, people that go into a sleep and their body starts to twitch when they are experiencing certain sounds, you know? Yeah. So this is like a super, super powerful medicine and, you know, I am not the healer. Uh, my instruments are not. It's really the space that's created that allows people to yeah. get to these deep places. So you try to you try to have a, a mind, body and spirit type experience, right? So can you talk to me about um, sound baths? I read something about some sound baths and how they feed the mind, body and the spirit. Yeah, well, you know, a sound bath, it's. I would say it uh -huh. empties your body, mind, and spirit. You mm. pretty much become a vessel where you're being just, you know, immersed in the sound. You let completely go of all thoughts. You become empty. Mm -hmm. So that later in life, you have more space to allow new things to come in. So you have more space to live your life fully and really feel 
what you want to feel instead of being filled with these anxieties, with these stressors. Right. So you're in a remote cabin in the lab, brewing up some stuff. So tell me a little bit about that. What are, what are you what are you working on like right now? Just give me a, a, a little snippet. <laughs> yeah, so right now I'm actually I just released a meditation. It's a meet your inner artist meditation that's available on uh, you can find it on Instagram. Okay. So I've been just recording a bunch of um bunch of sounds that I can incorporate into recordings because everything I've ever done was live. Mm -hmm, I've mm -hmm. never really recorded things. So now I'm working on a set where people can listen to it in their own homes. Yeah. You know, all of this wouldn't happen if I didn't have the experiences that I had in my life. And there's specifically, you know, one experience that really woke me up to this gift. Because if it wouldn't have been for this, I don't know if I would have been here still, you know? You've been in a lot of cultures. You said India, right? As one of them. Do you blend ancient wisdom with modern techniques in your sound healing sessions? I do, but I'm trying to be very respectful of it because yeah. cultural appropriation is something that is very important for me. So mm -hmm. all the techniques that I blend in my sessions are techniques that have been taught to me by the people and that have received um, like an okay to use them. But I mainly try to focus on really immersive sound experiences. Now, the instruments that I use, for example, I have a Native American uh, drum mm -hmm. that I received from someone who made it for me as a mm. gift. Mm -hmm. um, I have Native American flutes that have also been, one of them was a gift, one of them was a purchase, but I received from someone who made them for me, custom made. Right. So um, I'm trying to be very conscious of that. Mm -hmm. and make sure that everything that I use is um, appropriate, you know? Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what role did your background in psychology play in shaping uh, your, and your understanding of rest and recovery? A huge, 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 because, you know, when you are creating a space for people to release and for people to be able to feel vulnerable and really let go you need to be a little bit trauma informed and mm -hmm. you need to be also aware of how to manage people in moments of vulnerability. Okay. So this training has been really important for me to, to be able to hold space in an effective way and in a safe way, mm -hmm. because when people feel that they're safe, you know, mm. a lot of different things can come out. As I was mentioning before, people cry, people laugh. So that has been like very, very important, I think. All right. So you meant we're just rolling along here. I know mm -hmm. we talked we talked before about you having a um a near death experience. Um do you mind sharing sharing that experience with, with us with me today? Yeah, no, of course. Um yeah, yeah. that was the experience that really, you know, kind of put me on that path. So mm -hmm. I'm super excited to share that actually. So that was about seven, eight years ago. Um, I am standing uh, in a parking lot in Southern California after spending a whole day going from one bar to the next, trying to find a new job, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm waiting for this guy called Jesse, who I met earlier that day. He was supposed to find me my new job, you know, so he rolls up in his blue sports car. And as I open the door and we start chatting and I'm like, wow. What a nice guy, you know, he's taking right. the time to like help me find a job. I was super happy. Literally a minute later, he slams on the gas and I can sense that something in him has shifted right. and I start feeling unsafe. So I have no seatbelt. And as he starts, you know, rolling around and doing donuts, I'm like, wow, another guy just trying to show off. You know, so as I, as I look up and I can see this wall that we are speeding towards and I'm like, there, there's no way that we're going to make it. And that's when I hear this voice in my head saying, surrender, relax. If you don't, you are going to die. And for the first time in my life, I completely surrendered. I completely let go. I literally just melted into the seat. And then I get these flashbacks of all the moments 
you know, that I was invited to play music. I was invited to sing, invited to join a jam. And instead of saying yes, I said no, because fear was completely ruling my whole life. I was constantly sabotaging myself. And I just saw all these moments pass in front of my eyes. And, you know, next thing you know, I'm being pulled out of the car and I can just remember this lady looking at me so intensely being like, don't touch your face. Don't move. You have been in a terrible accident. And I feel nothing. I am completely numb. You know, I'm just tasting blood in my mouth, seeing it all over my hands. I'm looking at the totally smashed car against the wall, money flying everywhere. But that moment completely changed the trajectory of my life. From yeah. that point onwards, I really knew that I had to step into the artist that I was born to be and start saying yes, not only to life, but start saying yes to play and really, you know, allowing that creativity to come through and allowing those moments to emerge. Wow. I'll tell you what. So we talked a little bit before we started and I told you why I had these glasses on. Um, but I'm glad I had these glasses on because yeah, I, I, I felt a little emotional on that mm-hmm. one. Um, I really, truly appreciate you sharing that. Did the guy mean to do it? I mean, what was, or did he just lose control of his car after showing off? Like what, what, what was that about? Do you know? Have you ever Honestly, talked to him? Did he live? Yes, he lived okay. as well. Um, I think he was trying to show off. He was trying to show me how to drift. Yeah, And he did not know how to drift at all. And it all happened so quickly that, yeah. um, you know, I, I didn't even have time to tell him to be careful or to stop. I don't, it wasn't his intention to crash for sure. Okay. Okay. He crashed okay. his car. I mean, yeah. um, but it was, it, even today I, you know, I try to unpack that situation and it was a terrifying situation, you know, so my face was completely destroyed. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know how I still have the face. My nose was broken. You know, I lost like a patch of my hair. Yeah, it was really bad. All my inside of my mouth was open. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I'm so glad that it happened. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. without that moment, I would have never, you know, had that push. Yeah. to really follow my dreams and to find that purpose that today is making my life so meaningful. Yeah. And that's making my life, you know, really worth living for. So one of the things you found out was you wanted to help other creatives. So in in what ways do you assist creatives in reclaiming their inner artists in fostering artistic expression? Yeah, so, you know, this ex- everything that happened to me in that in that car crash the my the changes in my life didn't happen overnight yeah and it was definitely not my first wake up call so you know throughout the years that i found my way after mm-hmm. that car crash i developed you know these techniques um and it kind of boils down to these three critical steps um the cr- three critical steps to really awake your inner artist and be able to live the the life that you've dreamed of. So, you know, the first critical um, step is understand chaos. Mm-hmm. You know, and chaos can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. You know, it could be that your life, your house is a chaos. Everything is everywhere. You can't find your things. Your relationships might be a chaos. Your mind might be cluttered with things and you just can't get out of this drama of this constant noise. You keep repeating old patterns that are ultimately just bringing you back to your default mode, you know? So a lot of people don't understand chaos and what do they do? They try to control it. They try to avoid it, running away from the tornado. But what does that do is that it makes it worse, you know? So this is the first critical step. It's really all about understanding what happened in your life why is happening and where you want to move towards and how you want to use that. Because the great thing about chaos, you know, is that if you understand it and you're able to transform it, you can create incredible art from it. Art that's meaningful, inspiring, and that really comes from within. 
Okay. I was listening to the mind of the soul and, and, and it boils down for me to choices. Right. But he was talking about the choices that you make, make you a creator, a creator of your own life's art. Right. If you want to use stay with the art theme in having the choice or having the opportunity to choose to do these things, to want to understand chaos instead of running away from it creates different experiences for you down the road. But there's so many things that you're bringing up that are touching on a lot of things to just recently in my life. So I'm really loving this conversation. It's something yeah. that we sometimes forget. You know, we spend our life trying to find that kind of ties to my second step, which is access flow. Access you know? flow. Yeah. So people, tr instead of um, diving deep into their themselves and really use their own experiences as a catalyzer into making art, mm -hmm. they try to look for exterior inspirations, exterior motivations and validations even. Mm. And something that we all have that's so powerful. So we each have our own unique story. And yeah. nobody can take that away from you. Yeah. You know, what people have been through, like we all have such rich backgrounds, no matter what they are. And they are all so valid if we can express them in like a really, you know, authentic way. And that's right. how you make, inspire people. That's how people can get related to your art. Mm. So, you know, in the second, um, the second critical step is access flow, you know, and flow is such an elusive state. It's mm -hmm. almost hard to explain it, you know, but flow is that state where time goes by and you are completely consumed with the project. There is no resistance in the physical body. You're achieving this optimal state of performance, mm -hmm. you know? So someone, you think of someone and the person calls you, you see the signs that the universe is placing on your path. And you are really able to tap into that internal kind of guidance, mm -hmm. you know? So what happens when you're not in flow, right? Things are hard. Things are challenging. Yeah. You have difficulty kind of clarifying your art's message. Mm -hmm. As we said previously, you know, you are relying on exterior motivations, inspirations instead of tapping inside, right? Yeah. So... Imagine you're driving and there's a car that drives by and there's a bunch of mud on your windshield and you quite can't get it off with your windshield wipers and you <laughs> are flow is that fluid that mm. clears the mud and really allows you to be a vehicle to channel yeah. whatever you want to manifest in your life. I love it. I love it. Okay. And what's the, what's the third one? We on a, we on a roll now. Third one is make your art. It okay. sounds so easy, right? Just mm -hmm. make your art. But it's actually <laughs> that. It's do the thing that you want to do. And really, you know, like, really dig into your inner child. The ones mm. that wants to create, that wants to explore, that wants yeah. to transform without judgment, yeah. right? Without sabotage, without overthinking. But also step into your inner parent. The one you wish you had or the one you wish to be and stand by yourself, push yourself, develop discipline and ways and flows and different techniques to stay on that dream. Because if you never fail, sorry, if you never stop doing what you're doing, then you never fail. Then that failure becomes only a setback. And I encourage everybody to cultivate setbacks because this is the only way that you can truly move forward is by learning from all these steps that you're going across, right? So, so what are some practical steps individuals can take to like tune down the chaos in their mind and, and prioritize rest? Yeah, so I think the first thing is to really make a self audit and to sit mm. down with yourself and really write down all these things that have been on your mind, mm -hmm. carrying a journal you know, of mm -hmm. the things that are coming up, especially at night before going to bed. Mm -hmm. I advise everybody to get a journal and write down all the things that you have been overthinking. Journal. So you can mm -hmm. get them out of your mind so that when you go to sleep, it's not occupying your mind anymore. So yeah. that's like a really important thing, you know, in terms of, you know, finding your flow and in terms of 
being able to achieve these moments of creation. I also offer people to carry a journal. Let's say you're in a moment of resistance, right? You're trying to achieve a certain project and you're resisting it so much because resistance is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And all creatives have resistance. Okay. Carrying that journal and when you feel that resistance, you want to procrastinate usually. So mm -hmm. go procrastinate and write in your journal what <laughs> you will become, what type of person you will become if you don't do the thing that you want to do. Mm. And then write down what type of person you will become in a year from now if you keep going, you push yourself and you do the things you want to do. And then review that and really think what kind of person I want to do a year from now and follow that path. <laughs> you know, that is that is some great damn advice. And I, and I tell you why I've never heard, and I'm sure someone said it a lot, plenty of times. I just never heard it that way where you look and you assess like what type of person will I be if I don't do this? I love that. I never thought mm -hmm. of it in that perspective. I tell you what, I'm, I'm really, it's like, I'm, I'm sitting in the room with you. So what advice, yeah. do, you, what advice do you have for, for, for people who are struggling to let go of control and embrace their true calling? Oof, that has been my life journey, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it takes a lot of work to do that. But I think ultimately, like really digging into the teachings and really sitting with oneself and feeling that at the end of the day, we don't have any control over anything we do, you know, mm -hmm. nonlinear paths, take people to incredible places. You know, by accepting this contract, you think you're going to get there, but actually maybe by doing this, you're going to get there even quicker. So we never know where we're going to end up. And something that also I always repeat to myself and to people is that life is so short. How many more years do we have? You know, I'm in my 30s. I have another what? Another 40 years of productive work. 40 years. It's not a lot of time. So really digging into how much time you have left, how much are you trying to control that time and how much is that preventing you from following your dreams? I tell you what, I started doing the math based off of your math and I don't have much time at all. <laughs> it's time to start now. <laughs> I know that's all right. Hey, so I, I'm blowing through these, so I apologize if I'm going too fast, but you're definitely giving some, some very insightful advice and perspective and things like that. And I really appreciate it. But I'm about to ask you again, what was, what was one like major obstacle that you faced during your journey to becoming a sound healing uh, practitioner? It was fear. Okay. Fear from not being good enough. Fear from not being perfect enough. Mm -hmm. Fear from people not liking. It was pretty much just a bunch of delusions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of me feeling like I wasn't worthy. I'm not. Okay, go ahead. You, no, weren't, I you, mean, weren't, you weren't worthy of, <laughs> go ahead. I wasn't worthy of being, um, you know, in service. I mm. wasn't a good enough musician. So something that um, I've learned throughout my journey and something that I can also, you know, offer to the audience is it's really important to find a middle ground in your journey. So mm -hmm. when you're trying to achieve something, you know, if you were looking at a graph that's like this and the flow state is really in the middle and at the bottom here, you have boredom. And then on top of that, you have anxiety. So finding ways to be challenged enough where you're growing, but not overwhelming yourself to a point where you become anxious. So I spent most of my life surrounded by incredible musicians. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a lot of anxiety because it made me feel like I will never be as good as they are, you know? So, and really all these experiences that I mentioned, you know, with the near death experience and meeting all these people, traveling, ex experiencing life to the fullest, woke me up to the fact that I need to start now. I can get good at what I do. And I do have a gift that I need to share with the world because if I don't, then I'm actually preventing people from experiencing healing that I could provide for them, you know? Okay. I had some follow-up questions, but you answered it. So I asked you a few questions. You answered them beautifully. And thank you for sharing your insights. But what is it that I haven't asked you 
that you'd like to talk about or what would you like to share with the listeners right now something you think is very important <laughs> for them to either learn or something that's very important for you to let out well, we definitely th touched a lot of things. Um, something that really comes to mind to me right now is just do the thing that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Like, don't, you know, don't think about what other people think. Don't think about where you can or cannot be. Start failing now. Cultivate failures now because this is the only way forward. You know, how many times that some of my sound bats didn't work? How many times I had technical issues? How many times my cord of my guitar broke, you know? And these are the moments that forged really my inspiration, that forged my, you know, assertiveness and that gave me confidence in continuing doing what I want to do and just boldly go for you want to for what you want to do and never ever stop pursuing because we have so little time and if we really want to leave you know like our our mark on this world because i want all of us to when we're going to be lying on our deathbed feel fulfilled and feel like we have you know shared our story and that can be through art that can be through craft that can be through talking, writing books, whatever. But I just, this is my wish for everybody that you really feel that ease when you're, you know, leaving this world that you've done everything or at least something, you know, that is meaningful to you. Will LJ, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I feel motivated and inspired. I have purpose now to go out and do yeah. what it is that I'm meant to do. <laughs> hey, Willow, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Where can the listeners find out more about you, what you're doing, what you're about to do? Where, where should they go? So I started this project that's called Sound Grove. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, sound underscore grove. I also have a website, which is soundgrove.ca. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the two platforms where I operate now. And as I mentioned previously, if anybody is, you know, inspired by this awakening, this artist in them, I invite them to go and listen to my free 25 minute meditation, which is my crafted landscapes, um, my music production with uh, me guiding you through a journey to meet your inner artist. All right. All right. I love it. I'll have to try that as well. You know, I used to draw when I was younger. I want to mm -hmm. write now. So I think my art right now will be as, as a writer. Incredible. So I'm going to, I'm going to take advantage of your free and you take advantage too out there, your free 25 minute guided tour through sound therapy with Willow right? Yes. And we can find that on Sound Grove. CA is for Canada, y'all. So no dot yeah. com. Let's make sure <laughs> we do that. All right. So thank you, Willow, um, for, you know, for, for sharing your inspiring journey. Um, the accident part really touched me. Um, being able to get some, some clarity in that chaos, in that time in your life, you know, is a lesson that we can all take, right? We don't, but the point of you being on here today is not for us to have to go through a traumatic, you know, experience in order to get that clarity, right? You don't need to go through that to get that clarity. You can start right now. And uh, that sound therapy sounds like an amazing way to be able to free yourself. Those sound baths, suppose they empty you, you know, empty you <laughs> out, right? And, and get you in a state of creativity. So take advantage, right? Reach out to Willow, check out soundgrove.ca. And um, once again, thank you for sharing your journey, your insights into the transformative power of sound healing. And as we navigate life's challenges, let's remember the importance of prioritizing rest and self-care. And if you're interested in exploring sound healing further or seeking guidance on your path to personal and professional growth, be sure to connect with Willow. And remember, rest is not just about sleep. It's about tuning down the chaos in our minds. And thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take care of yourselves. I'm out. Thanks, thank Willow. you so much. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. To make sure that you don't miss a single episode, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe? And also, I have a quick survey. It'll take you one to three minutes just so I can get a better understanding on how to get the best content to you. So here that is as well. Until next time, once again, thank you.